Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you are new here, my name is Rebecca and today I thought it'd be fun to do something a little bit different and test out some DIY craft kits from Five Below. So I have three kits here that I am excited to try and we will find out, are they worth it or not? I, if they are, I think they'd be a great gift idea. They'd be fun for kids because they're ages six and up and ages eight and up which it's kind of funny because like this resin pour set says ages eight and up. I'm not gonna lie. I'm actually a little intimidated to do this. I've never worked with resin before. And on top of that, it's a $5 kit. So, you know, I'm a little scared. Like, is it gonna work? Or what if I make a mistake and I don't have enough of the product? Like how easy are these kits to use? And do they give you enough to actually, you know, make something good for $5? <laughs> so super excited to try. They have a marble pour. Now I've done acrylic pours here on my channel before. They're really fun to do. And I have them around my house. I've given some as gifts as well. Now this has a textured canvas. They give you two canvases and, oh, you can actually see inside some of these. So you can see what comes in here. And then they've got their directions. Can't see in this one, just this one. Excited to try this and see how it works. And then we also have a gilded art, which has the gold foil leafing. And I have used that before, but again, I just had loose foil leaf and I knew what I wanted to do with it. So, you know, I've never really, haven't really done these step-by-step -step type of DIY kits. I thought it would be fun to try, see how they work, what could go wrong. I just wanna find out what is inside these boxes and how well does the product work? Okay, so let me know which one of these kits you are most excited to see how it turns out. Obviously, the first thing I'm gonna do in getting started here is cover my workspace. Let's go ahead and do the gilded art first. This is an ages eight and up. It does say adult supervision required. Got our little canvases here, some stencils. Now, they didn't give me this brush. I have this one from Dollar Tree. I don't know, they said cover the whole thing. So here we go. Again, I feel like this is not gonna be nearly enough. Am I doing something wrong? Let's do some gold with the gild paste. Actually, before I brush that one on. All right, I want to get some. So they do give some stencils. I kind of like this pattern here. Um, however, I also have this little Dollar Tree ribbon that I'm thinking of using to get me a little bit of texture. I'm gonna go back, we're gonna leave this as is for a second, let this dry. Um, I'm already feeling like I already have these mostly emptied out. I don't know what they're talking about building up texture with this gild paste. There is so little in here. They say to make sure you cover the whole canvas and yeah, I, there's just not nearly enough. I think you would need double, triple at least. Let's use black because I have a ton of that. Um, I don't know if I should try to paint the whole canvas first, but I'm gonna work with what they gave me because they did not give enough for that. So we're gonna just work with what we have and I'm not gonna add any other stuff of my own. I wanna just see what I can do with what they give me. Now I do seem to have enough black, so we're gonna go with that and use the black to create something fun. Sorry if my hand is blocking this, but I'm basically just filling in the stencil a little bit. All right, we're gonna let this one dry for a second. Bring this here. I am just really not too sure about this. I feel like we're not off to a good start. <laughs> Oh, 
trying to figure out how I would want to use the Guild paste and I'm thinking of going back onto this other one here. I think I'm gonna do it just coming in kind of from the side here with these strokes and hopefully it's gonna create a little bit of texture that then the gold foil will adhere. I'm gonna run a little bit of this one through where I made this design down the middle to make it a little bit raised and thicker. I wanna add the gold foil through here, so hopefully that's going to give us a little more texture to add the some raised parts with the foil. We're gonna see how this turns out. All right, I am getting to thinking though that we may want to mix this gold and include some guild, the rest of the guild paste in with it, just because I am not sure how if the if the gold leafing is going to fully cover that or not. So I think I'm going to mix this little bit in here together, and then that way, hopefully, it'll be a little bit thicker, just in case if the gold leafing doesn't fully cover, because those spots are then going to look a little bit more white. So I think that one's looking. Interesting. <laughs> Woo, we got some gold left. I'm gonna do the same and just dot it in here. I don't know, very abstract art. I'm just gonna run with it. I'm gonna empty the tube because why not? Here is the first one. Looks actually pretty cool, just as is, but I'm ready to go ahead and add some gold leafing. They also provided our gold leaf flakes in here. Let's see how this looks. Should be like a gold paper. Ta-da! Okay. So this has had a couple hours to dry now. Let's go ahead and see if we can brush off the excess foil leaf and see what we're left with underneath. It's kind of hard to tell what, what your picture is actually going to look like when you're putting the glue on because some spots come out a little bit thicker and some, you know, there's not much glue on there at all as you're using the brush. Not exactly even or perfect by any means. So I'm just hoping that this is gonna come out looking hopefully pretty. I have quite a bit of excess here, which I kind of feel like I should save and use for a different project at some point. That looks pretty cool. Artwork number two, and I'm gonna do the same thing with this brush, lightly brushing it away. I think this is gonna be so pretty though. I'm already loving how this one's turning out. Okay, my friends, here is what is inside of the package. Decisions, decisions now. I do like the fact that this one comes with this little scraper tool thingy. Kind of was thinking of doing some texture in these lines where they kind of give you a guide here. They do say that you're gonna need some paper cups. So I've got some of these from the dollar store. I also had some of these little plastic ones that I think would work. Um, I had them with my dessert table supplies and I don't know where they're originally from, but I was thinking that they might work pretty well and not be as wasteful as these would be for pouring paint into. But I might use these just to prop up my um, canvas on top of. So like if you've done acrylic pouring, you can do this and then that way all of your paint can just run over and run off the edges. This beautiful swirly pattern is calling my name and I'm gonna give it a try. So I can hopefully create like a light pink with this one. Okay, that's pretty. I like that, I like that. Yeah, go easy with the water. You can definitely add more as needed. So if you're gonna use the silicone oil, do not add any water. You definitely want it to be able to pour and move easily across the top of your canvas.
just tapping it with my glove a little bit just to help the paint blend in there a little bit better and get to the edge to get full coverage. So far I feel a little disappointed with how well you can still see the lines underneath. I think that looks really funny, but the coloring is looking really pretty. Sunshine and iced coffee break. I'm very interested to see how this is going to dry. And one thing I did not think about is when you do an acrylic pour, it is best if you can put it somewhere where there's not any airflow, like somewhere in like a quiet room with nothing going on so it can just sit and dry. You, otherwise, you know, it stays wet for a while. So like any dust or anything in the air could get stuck in the paint. The trick is going to be to see if we can lift up the cups and transfer the painting onto here without it falling and without it covering me in paint either. I already threw my gloves away because they were full of paint. Okay, I'm definitely gonna get paint on me doing this. I think we can do it. Okay, I think it's on. I think it's stable and I'm going to very carefully... Did I set this thing in paint? Oh, sheesh. Okay, I'm gonna try to carry this to some other room off of the table and then maybe we can make our acrylic pour number two. So let's go ahead and set up for our second acrylic pour. Actually, my coffee got cold, so I poured it in here with some crushed ice. I think a little piece, I think some eyebrow hairs just fell out. <laughs> Losing my eyebrows over here. Texturizing paint. Let's give it a try. I mean, we got the whole little container here for just this one piece. So shouldn't be a problem. I'm going to have fun with this. And you do that much and it already feels like it's empty. Like it's got air. I need to already work down the paint. This is what I'm telling you guys. I honestly feel like it's a little bit of a joke with this unless you just wanted texture in one little corner, but that kind of defeats the point of like cover your canvas and smear it around and have fun making textures because there is not enough, not nearly enough. The tube is half empty and that's what I put on. I don't know about this. All right, you know what? I'm not gonna go all the way. I'm gonna do this one. Hmm, maybe this one. I like this little tool though. I'm definitely saving this for some future projects. I, I feel like I could, I could uh, get used to this one. So I kind of, this is making me wanna buy like a big container of this and start incorporating that in some other projects because this is pretty fun. Make sure that you let your texture paint dry before you do the acrylic pour. The texture paste has dried on here. You can see there's a little bit of texture, to be honest. I was, you know, it did flatten out more than I thought. I'm not sure when I go to put the paint on here how visible that's really going to be. But I've mixed up my purple paint here. I used up the rest of the pink and the white. And I added in the rest of the silicone oil with this one. Um, this, the purple, I just did water to thin it a little bit. Kimchi's drinking water <laughs> in the background. And then for the gold one, I just added a little bit of water in here. Not much. You can add more. I did maybe like a half a teaspoon or something for the other, like half of this bottle. And I will add more if I need it. So not sure how to open it, but let's try cutting the edge of the top off. Yeah, that worked. This one seems pretty thick so far. Um, we're gonna go ahead and do our pink one in here. Let's add the pink here. All right, my gloves were all full of paint after the last project and I actually threw them away. So thankfully I have an extra set of some gloves that we're going to get on here so that we can tip our canvas. Okay, ever so carefully. Kimchi's looking at the birds outside, which there really shouldn't be birds because we have a rainy day right now. So not sure about those birds he's imagining. And I think that looks pretty good. I mean, I didn't really know what to expect with this one, but it's very bold and vibrant. There's definitely more gold than I thought I was going to have enough left to do. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. We're gonna let this one dry. It is gonna need 24 hours. So I got to thinking, now that the artwork is done with the pink and purple and gold, I kind of want to try something. So I made a little tube of paper here <laughs> and I was thinking 
that we could add some glitter and I could just use this to kind of pour the glitter in a very neat line and follow, you know, the pattern of the paint. All right, I'm gonna pour some glitter in here. I'm gonna use my finger to kind of close off the other end. This glitter is really fine, which makes it very messy. Okay, so the second that I let go, this glitter is going to pour out. So definitely we've got to get it in the right position. Basically, I think I should pick what is gonna be the easiest. <laughs> okay, purple and gold might be easier. I think we have too many swirls in with the pink. It's gonna make it more tricky to do that one. So here it goes. <sighs> okay, Ooh, that came out better than expected, but this glitter is really thick. There's no way that is all gonna dry on there. We may need to go over this with something clear or maybe like a spray adhesive. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna try to do this side as well. I'm getting some in my hands and then that is going to get it onto the whole artwork. So gotta be super careful with that. This looks absolutely awesome and amazing. I really love this so far other than my little spill of glitter in there. Time for the resin pour. I'm really excited to do it because I've been wanting to try resin for so long, but it's kind of expensive. Like if you go online and you look to buy resin, like it's not cheap. So it's one of those things where I've always felt like if I mess up, it's gonna be an expensive mistake. Maybe I'm better off just buying my items in home goods or something and not, not attempting it as a DIY, but this is the perfect way to attempt a resin DIY because it's really cheap and at least you'll get a feel for it. All right, I'm already getting confused with this because they tell us to spread an even layer of glue to the area of the board that you wish to decorate first. But hello, no glue came in this kit. So I think we're on our own for this one. But I don't know what kind of glue. Like paper glue, like Elmer's glue, hot glue, wood glue. Um, there's not enough gems to do the whole edge, but I feel like with just some random ones, I don't know how weird that's gonna look. I, I feel like it might be a little strange. What would happen if I was to put some gems down inside? I don't know how transparent the resin is gonna be, with these two colors. I'm just gonna try it out a couple different ways and then go from there and see if it feels like it would be worth messing up the entire project in an attempt to get some gems in here. And if it feels like it would be worth it, then I'll leave them in here and we're just gonna go for it. I think the worst that can happen is that mine doesn't look good. So then you guys will see that and do yours differently. This looks so pretty. I added the two blues, and now I'm coming back with a little more clear with no color in it and adding that over the middle so that can kind of fill it in a little bit. And I pretty much used up all of the resin, I think, or all of my mixture besides a little bit here. I might try adding a little bit of this dark blue dye out near the edge and just see what happens. So it's been sitting for like 10 minutes and I'm having some issues here with leaking out the bottom, in particular at this end. So I'm just trying to like wipe that up with some paper towels being careful not to get that on my skin or anything. There's a little bit coming out this end. I don't know, I, I feel like that's gonna be an issue, but maybe not. Um, they also said it's gonna take 72 hours to dry. So I don't know, I guess I just leave it here and see what happens. So if this resin keeps leaking out at this rate, I feel like I'm not gonna even have any left in here, but we're gonna go with it. Hopefully it doesn't all leak out and we'll see. Hey, my sweet friends, we are back. It is day two of the testing five below decor crafts. So Kimchi wants to play fetch. 
I hope he's not gonna run through all of the wires that I have for to get some lights in here. Say I wanna play fetch all day long. First up is this little piece here, which is still drying. They said that it should be dry overnight, but then I think it takes 72 hours to fully cure. So we've got our resin piece here, and I don't know what I'm gonna do because the resin truly leaked underneath so, so much. I don't know if that's normal or if I did something wrong. They didn't really say that I was supposed to do anything. They just said to place the wood on top of this wax paper. So I am just really not sure. The resin adhered so much into the wood. I think I better not peel it because it's pulling up a little bit of the wood there. I think we'll just do our best to neatly trim the edge. And I'm gonna try to not let it damage the wood if possible too much. As I cut into it, it kind of wants to make the wood pull away a little bit. The back is gonna be a little messy. <laughs> so I just brushed some of the antique wax in here so you can see, um, just to help cover where the resin was leaking. And now I'm adding some water in here to spread the antique wax a little bit better. I'm gonna be careful not to let it get onto the resin. Let's just set this one aside, let it finish drying. I okay, everyone, I want to share with you my final thoughts for the end of this video. The first ones I wanna review are the gold leafing kit. These are the two pieces that I created from the single gold leaf kit for $5. I got my frames on Amazon because these were actually six by eight canvases and I could not find a frame in the dollar store. So I just ended up buying these on Amazon and it was just easier so that I could use them around the house. I just wanted to frame them. Here's how they turned out. To be honest, I think it's fun and worth it for $5 because, you know, getting the foil leaf, getting a chance to kind of play around with it and experience what it would be like using the gold foil leafing and just, just kind of have fun with it. I think it's worth it. Um, I was very disappointed on the texture, paste or paint, whatever that was. There was so little of that that really essentially creating any sort of raised texture, in my opinion, was not going to really work. But just for the fun of having the black, white and gold paint and then the gold foil leaf, like I think you can have fun with it. So here is the first acrylic pour. It could go any direction at all that you like. This is an eight by 10 Dollar Tree frame and my biggest complaint about this is I know I mixed the silicone oil somewhere in here and there's, I, I don't see anything with like the bubbles from it. it. It just, I don't know. It just doesn't look like it's at all in here. Um, I was also kind of a little bit frustrated with the fact that you can still see the lines of the, the design that they printed. I was also feeling kind of disappointed with the fact that there wasn't really enough paint to fully cover it. That's the first one. And then the second one that we did has some cracking in it, which this is another dollar store frame. I actually took the little mirror out of it. It was a mirror frame, but it's a five by seven. So an eight by 10 and a five by seven. So these ones you'll actually be able to get frames for in Dollar Tree, but I don't know why it cracked. I don't think the paint was too thick on there. Um, the only thing that I could think of is I did put the texture paste on this one. And despite the fact I thought it was fully dry, like maybe it wasn't. And that's why we got some cracking. I'm not entirely sure. I did mix the, um, the oil in here as well, but that didn't seem to make any noticeable difference on which one it was in. The thing I'm probably most happy about with this one is how well the glitter actually worked out. I was so impressed. I did not expect my little glitter trick to work, which I know it wasn't part of the kit and I took a little creative liberty there to just give it a try and see if it would work. And then I did do an acrylic spray sealer on top. I already had it and it's just little, so I just did like a quick sealer. So that gave this one more of a shine. The glitter stayed on and I think it looks awesome. I love what I did with the glitter here. That's my favorite part about this one. If you're just looking to kind of experiment with acrylic pours and just have fun and play around with some canvases, then this one I'm kind of like 50-50 on because you can also get an eight by 10 or even an 11 by 14 canvas in the dollar store. 
just for a dollar. And then you can also get acrylic paints in there. So because the texture didn't really work, the texture paint thing didn't work, and the silicone oil didn't really create any kind of bubbles that I can see, I have to say, I don't think it's much better or different than what you could pick up in Dollar Tree and then you could actually choose exactly the acrylic paints that you want. You can choose the canvas size that you want. I think it going to Dollar Tree for the acrylic pour idea, you might be able to, um, you know, you might be able to do a little better for your money depending what you want. Now, last up is the resin pour. Was this one worth it? In watching some videos on resin, apparently you're supposed to check your table make sure like with a level and make sure that it is exactly level or the resin will leak to one side so apparently our table is sloping toward the wall over there um but anyway i'm not sure what i would have done maybe stick something under the legs of the table but i, I think that would have been a kind of a little bit of a challenge <laughs> to get it exactly i mean it's it looks level, but I guess it was ever so slightly off. So that can really mess with your resin pour. Maybe you're better off doing it on the floor, not on the table. Maybe that would help. But in any case, I think that for $5, for the experience of like getting to try out and test resin, I think it was worth it just because resin's kind of pricey. So even if this doesn't come out to be exactly what you want and you don't have color choices, you know, they just give you these blues, but I think it's worth it just for the experience of kind of seeing if it's something you enjoy working with and this kind of a creation. I stuck my little gems down in the center and hey, it kind of worked. I think they were suggesting to glue them along the edge, which would have been really cool, but there weren't nearly enough. So either I could have attempted like smashing them with a hammer and then getting more like broken little pieces and gluing that on which they didn't suggest that i'm just throwing it out there like maybe that would work to fill in all the way around the top the edge there there were just not enough pieces to go around both edges so i stuck them inside hey it worked and i took a little creative liberty on this one as well adding a little bit of the antique wax and a coat of mod podge i think the mod podge was very unnecessary in my opinion it did not add much of a shine. I was hoping to get it a little bit glossier looking. It didn't really add that much gloss to it. For $5, this is a great introduction to resin. A great way to see if it's something you enjoy working with, if you have fun with this project, and just to get a feel for how quickly it sets up and dries and just, just all the things before you might spend money for, um, you know, a larger quantity to do a bigger project. So I think it's a great test piece for anybody who is considering maybe working with resin and they just want to kind of dip their toes in before they take the full plunge into buying all the products and everything for a larger resin piece and how costly that could be like if it goes wrong try it out with this one from five below first and you know get a feel for the mixing it and the pouring and the, the setting up and all that so anyway that is my review of the five below craft kits i hope that you guys enjoyed let me know which one of these craft kits looked the most fun to you which one would you want to try and as always i'm wishing you a beautiful and blessed day consider subscribing before you go i'd love to have you and i will see you soon in my next video bye